Hi and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Amanda and I thought today we would try some festive desserts for the 4th of July. I love to cook but I'm new to baking. So let's just do this journey together and I will share with you what I learned and what I would do differently with some of these dishes. So let's jump right in. So for the Oreo cream cheese truffles, you just need a handful of ingredients. So you'll need Oreos, eight ounce brick of cream cheese, some white almond bark and some red and blue candy melts and also some sprinkles. And I will have all the exact ingredients and recipes in the description box. But right now I'm just putting my Oreos into a blender and crushing them up. Just one glass in. You're already on my mind when it gets late. Does anyone else's dogs run and jump and bark and go crazy whenever they hear the blender or the mixer or the vacuum? Just pay attention in this video. Anytime I'm around a blender or a mixer, you will see my dogs barking in the background. And in the beginning, when you're getting out all of your um, ingredients and tools and everything, just go ahead and set your cream cheese out on the counter so it can be softening. And then we're going to add it to the Oreo mix here and we're going to switch it over into our mixing bowl and mix the cream cheese and Oreo together. And I don't know what it is about cream cheese and Oreos mixed together, but this recipe by far was my favorite of all the ones we're gonna make today. It just tasted so yummy. And now we are just going to line a baking sheet with some parchment paper and roll the Oreo cream cheese mixture into balls and place them on your pan. And in just a few minutes, we're going to go ahead and melt the red and blue candy melts. And here's something I didn't know. Okay, so it's literally the only job of a candy melt is to melt. But for some reason, they just weren't runny enough to drizzle. So my crazy self added milk to thin it, but it clumped up really bad. So I looked online and it said to use um, either easy, do dip, easy thin dipping aid, which clearly I didn't have or to use vegetable shortening and add it a little at a time and that did work for the most part. I also melted the almond bark to make the outer coating for each ball. This was very tricky as well. The instructions said to use a fork to dip it and then to just pull the fork out. 
ball every time I did this I would either see huge chunks of the Oreo coming out or fork holes everywhere so I tried a few different ways and ultimately deciding that using two spoons turned out the best And I originally was going to just use the blue and red drizzle on all of them, but I decided last minute that I wanted to mix it up and use some sprinkles. So since the almond bark had already dried, I just ended up re-dipping the tops and then used the sprinkles. And the cute thing about this recipe is you can make them for any season or holiday just by changing up the color of the candy melts and also using different sprinkles. And you could also add in some peppermint extract into the Oreo cream cheese mixture and top with some crushed candy canes for Christmas. A few things to note with these truffles, if you want to freeze them, they will last up to two months in an airtight container. Also in an airtight container, they will stay fresh in the fridge for up to three weeks. And if you have little ones, let them dip or sprinkle. And you could also use a cute little glass of milk to go with them by dipping the edge of your glass in the sprinkles before adding the milk. Here's how they turned out. Let me know what you guys think. We are moving on to the red, white, and blue poke cake. And here are the items you will need. And again, I will have everything listed in the description box below.
Right now, I am just preparing my cake mix. I'm using a white cake mix and just preparing how the box says to. And then I will put it in the oven and I'm going to let it cool for at least 30 minutes. While the cake is in the oven and while it's cooling, I'm going to get together everything I need for the next part. And I'm going to be preparing some, preparing some jello. So I'm going to use some larger glass measuring cups, a tiny whisk, but you could use a spoon. And I'm also going to need a funnel and some containers that have a squirt spout. The reason this is called a poke cake is because you poke holes in it. The wooden spoons I had, the handles were just too thick, so I used the end of this meat tenderizer. It was the perfect size. And you just poke holes all over the cake without going all the way through to the bottom. Next, I'm going to prepare the red and blue jellos. It says to dissolve the packet of jello with one cup of boiling water and mix it around. Once that is dissolved, you add a half a cup of cold water and then you just repeat for the blue jello. And just a tip, if you are using the same dishes to make both colors of Jello, make sure you wash and rinse them out very well, or in this case, you might end up with a purple color. So after doing this part myself, I'm not sure if using these containers were the best thing. As you can see, it was kind of flying out everywhere and I tried very hard to control it, but it was just really hard. I wonder if leaving it in the measuring cup and just using the pour spout would have been better. If you have any suggestions on what you would have used, please let me know. And again, another reason why I kind of didn't want to use these again is because you'll see later when I cut into it that it does look red and blue but there were some spots that also did look purple when you are done filling up your cake with the red and blue jello you will just need to cover it and refrigerate for at least two hours and then you can move on to the topping which is just cool whip and powdered sugar mixed together
And now I'm just sprinkling on some sprinkles that we had from earlier and then we will be all done. And I think because of the jello inside, it's such a really cool and refreshing cakes and it's one of the most moist cakes I've ever eaten. And you can also change this recipe up as well to fit different holidays like using red and green jello for Christmas. Also, I thought I would note it is important to store your poke cake in the refrigerator after you've completed making it, as well as in between servings, or it can become a melted mess pretty quickly. If you guys decide to make this cake, please come back on here and let me know how you think it turned out. Now we are moving on to a red, white, and blue cherry pie with only five simple ingredients. So there's cherry pie filling, refrigerated pie crusts, an egg, cookie icing, fresh blueberries, and if you want to serve it with some vanilla ice cream. You're going to need the two pack of refrigerated pie crusts and I'm just taking the first one and placing it into my pie dish. And then I'm going to go around to all the edges and flute them, I think it's what it's called. You just take your forefinger and thumb on one hand and your finger on the other hand and just kind of do it in a little pattern. It says to generously pierce the bottom of the crust and bake at 425 for about five minutes until the crust sets. And while we're doing that, we are going to take out our second pie crust and use our star cookie cutter. So instead of making the traditional top crust of our pie, we're just going to lay out all the stars for the top. The recipe calls for 40 ounces of your cherry pie filling and I used about that much but due to seeing how much it bubbled over I would definitely use a little less next time. The recipe says to place your star pattern over the cherries, overlapping in some places and touching the exterior crust in others. So really there's no perfect or imperfect way to do this. Next, you are supposed to take a beaten egg and brush it on to the edges of the pie crust and also the stars because it says it's supposed to help it brown and be shiny and pretty. Well, as you will see when mine comes out, it is definitely not shiny, but definitely brown. I did further investigate on how to keep your pie from burning and I read that you can use a silicone protector because they are adjustable and fairly cheap or you can make a foil shield to help um, your pie to not brown so much around the edges. Next, we place it in the oven for 40 to 45 minutes, checking back during baking to make sure it's not browning too much, and then you remove it and allow it to fully cool. And so this is what mine looked at, looks like after it came out of the oven. And it says to take your container of icing and just fill in a few of the stars and then sprinkle your blueberries on top. 
And I wasn't sure how icing on a pie would taste, but it was really, really good. And this is how our 4th of July cherry pie turned out. So moving on to our last and final dessert, which are meringue cookies. And if you are still with me, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it so, so much. Meringue cookies can be very, very tricky. So my first tip is to leave your egg whites out at room temperature for about 30 minutes. Then just beat them with your whisk attachment for no more than 30 seconds, just until they look foamy. After that, then you add your cornstarch and your vinegar. The vinegar allows the egg whites to form a more stable foam and the cornstarch helps the cookie to stay soft in the center with an outer crunch. Mix this until soft peaks form. And my next tip would be to run your sugar through a food processor or blender until it is fine. And then I like to add my sugar either like a tablespoon at a time to a fourth a cup at a time, turning the mixer off and on until really stiff peaks form. Now it is time to make our colors and flavors. For the red, just add in your red jello powder with some red food coloring if you want, and same with the blue. And when we move on to the white, we will just be adding in some lemon extract for flavor. This is the exact consistency that we are wanting. It looks so beautiful. And again, if you want the red to be more deep and the blue as well, you can add as much food coloring to get the desired color that you want. Now moving on to a hack that my daughter taught me to keep your icing or whatever you're using from coming out the other end of your bag. First, wrap it up in plastic wrap and cut one of the ends before putting it down into the icing bag. i 
There are so many fancy tools and tips for meringue cookies, but we are just using the star tip that we already had on hand. Although I'm definitely on the hunt for the perfect meringue cookie kit, we are going to my husband's youngest brother's wedding in Denver in two weeks, and they are doing different kinds of cookies instead of cake, and my daughter volunteered to make meringue cookies. And we are in the process of perfecting them in time. I've been looking on YouTube and Instagram for fun and cute ways to make them, and I had no idea there were so many options. There are even some ways where you flip the icing bag inside out and take a wooden stick dipped in your food coloring and make stripes down your bag before adding the icing, and it makes the neatest color patterns when you squirt them out onto your pan. I was thinking about vlogging, making those, or even vlogging some of the trip and wedding. If that would be something you would want to see, let me know and I will definitely post that. Some more tips for making these meringue cookies is to use a mixing bowl that is very clean and very dry. Also, when separating your egg whites, be very careful. Even a tiny bit of yolk will make it more difficult to whip the meringue into stiff peaks. And you certainly can use a hand mixer or even do this by hand. It's just, it's just gonna take a lot of muscle and a little bit longer. You will need to preheat your oven to 200 degrees and bake these for 90 minutes. Then turn the oven off and let them sit for six hours. I bake these in the evening and just let them sit in the oven overnight. So this is how the meringue cookies turned out. You guys will have to let me know what you thought of each and every one of these desserts. And thank you again so much for watching. I know it was a long video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.